and welcome to this video where I'd like to go over how to handle using text in FreeCAD. So I'm going to start by creating a new part and we'll immediately go to the part design workbench and from here we'll create a body and a sketch and we'll sketch on the XY plane. I'll start by creating a corner rectangle and changing to construction mode, creating two construction lines. You can also use the polyline command for this. We'll create a, a relation between these two lines as being equal with the E key and parallel. Now I can give a dimension using Shift H to be a width of six inches. And let's go shift V for a height of two inches. From here, I can close with my fully defined sketch and create a pad that will make 0.125 or an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm, I have to use my scroll pad as I'm actually in the middle of moving house and so I don't have a mouse with me. But we're going to choose reversed and OK. From here I've got this face that I want to add text onto. How do we do that? Well, if I can uh, get the zoom correct, maybe I'll just use the uh, manual zoom button here. I can switch to the draft workbench and create, uh, let's use this button here, this S. And uh, there's a few things uh, on this menu that I want to point towards. The first one is this font file button. FreeCAD has to reference an outside file to determine font, and uh, I have actually downloaded bodini.ttf as a font. If you're looking uh, where to get fonts, I can open up Firefox and say uh, ttf download, and you can see um, 1001freefonts.com is, I think, one that I've used. So just uh, you can download these these for free, and whatever font looks good, you can actually use in FreeCAD simply by finding the TTF file. So string, what do we want it to say? Well, let's let's say something like that. I think I've accidentally opened up LibreOffice Impress here. So now um, on height, let's go point. Uh, yeah, I think point four is okay. I think that'll be intentionally too big. Uh, which will actually be a good thing. So here I've got this text that's come in, and if you have SOLIDWORKS experience, this is just like a surface in SOLIDWORKS. You'll see that there is uh, no depth to it whatsoever. So what do we do to actually position this and create this as actual text as a solid? The first thing that I want to do is go to the history tree and make sure that my shape string, which is the text, is highlighted. <coughs> After highlighting the shape string, um, I can uh, come to my size down here and I'll say 0.2 and then I can hit refresh and there you go. So the data tab down here actually helps to determine uh, what size your text is. You have other options too. The shape string highlighted, you can go to tasks and try to scale or move or rotate, but uh, as far as um, sizing goes, I really like that data tab the best. So here's the move command. Um, you also have it over here. I can click on this move command and actually just even visually position this text where I want it to be. You may be wondering if you can uh, dimensionally locate this for a more precise or you know, parametric feel to where you put the text in? The answer is yes, I'll show you that in a moment. For now, how do I actually um, make this into extruded real text? Well, again, I want to highlight my shape string, go to the part tab, and from here I can choose extrude, and I'll choose 0.125, so the text will be actually extruded the same thickness as what I made my rectangular prism. And I can uh, really simply say OK, and I create my extruded text. So um, to the question earlier, how do I position this text using dimensions? And can I engrave the text instead of extrude it? 
Well, I can highlight this face, and uh, I'm actually just going to go straight to my sketcher, and I'm going to create a sketch on my face, which uh, that should work, and I'm going to put some driving geometry down, right? I'm going to make one line that's horizontal. Shift H will give me a horizontal dimension, and I actually need to use the edge import tool, this button here, and I'll import this edge. So I can say relative to this corner, shift H, this edge can be something like, I'll use this corner here, 0.75 inches, shift V, this point will have a height of let's say something like 0.75 again. Now I just need to give it an arbitrary length. So we'll give it a length with shift H of half an inch looks fine. So I've got a fully defined sketch here. We'll close that and head back to the draft workbench where I can select text. And I again will choose my font. And I'll choose a height. This time we'll make it smaller, say 0.1. And I can add maybe a URL. say OK and our text shows up up here. Now uh, before we've just sort of visually and again I'm stuck here let's uh, use the manual things because I don't have a mouse due to my relocation. Um, we, we've used the move command to visually place something but now we can dimensionally place it because we have a dimension driving this sketch. So I can uh, zoom in we're going to choose move, we're going to choose this upper corner, there we go, and we're going to place the upper corner right on that corner of our sketch so that we have some dimensions driving it. So now that we're hooked onto that corner of the sketch, you can see it highlighted there, um, the, the question becomes how do we engrave the text. How do we cut into this? What I'm going to do is with my next shape string highlighted, go back to my part menu and do as I've done before. I'm going to extrude it and I'm going to go thicker. Right? Let's go all the way through. See what it looks like when we go all the way through. So we'll reverse the extrusion and apply. And you can see if my uh, pad Oh, I'll say OK. Maybe now it'll let me move my view. You can see we're, we're going all the way through to the bottom here. And so what we'll do is highlight our extrude. Actually, we'll highlight the pad, hold the control key, highlight the extrusion, and choose this one. This is make a cut of two shapes. This is a Boolean cut. And when we click that, we're going to actually cut one body with another body. So we're cutting out the text. And that did not seem to work. All right, so it looks like we have a... Uh, I see what happened. We uh, have a redundant extrusion here. So I think I probably uh, applied that extrusion twice. So when we cut through, it, uh, the other extrusion remained. So let's highlight Pad, hold the Control key, Extrude 001, and we'll do a Boolean cut. And now it should cut all the way through. So taking a closer look, you can see that we indeed have now um, cut all the way through, but there are some things that aren't quite realistic about this. You can see that our O is just floating in space, there's nothing holding it in place. And uh, you can look at um, some other things like the E's, maybe the G and the P, those are just floating there. So how do we make this a little bit more realistic into something that we could manufacture or 3D print? And uh, we can do a simple edit, right? We can look at uh, in the history tree of our cut. We can go to the extrude. And by highlighting the extrude, instead of doing the length of half an inch, 
let's do a length of, I don't know, 0 0.05, right? 50 thou. So we'll cut 50 thou deep and we'll hit that little refresh button up top. And now we actually bottom out. So if you can tell, we've made an engraving of text. There is a bottom to it, and so it's much more realistic. And it's something that we can manufacture, 3D print, do whatever we want with, and have all the letters um, with integrity. So that's the way that we can both extrude and engrave text. Note at the end, you may have a need to map text to a face that uh, you currently don't have the text on. And that's simply a matter of using the move command. You can use the move command to rotate the text to the same angle as whatever face you need, and then, of course, move the text to that face. So this move command works in multiple dimensions as well. Uh, in that sense, you should be able to create text and move it to whatever face you need. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, please subscribe. And that's the best way to help me back. Uh, I'll include a time-lapsed rendering of this. Um, and uh, <clears throat> if you're interested in learning how to render, uh, please see a video link in the description that covers a playlist on how to use Blender to create realistic looking renderings of your parts. I'll see you in the next video.